Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a brand new copy of King of Twelve. It's a new game by Corax Games, brought to us in the US by Lucky Duck Games. King of Twelve is a card game where you will excel if you take different choices than other players. If you match character cards with another player or score the same points, both players will be cancelled and the others will benefit. Players will each have a 12-sided die that represents a stone to use to compete with all other players. The manipulation of these stones is known to be an art and is impossible to master alone, so players will need to use supporting characters all across the 12 kingdoms to help, with your opponents also vying for the help of the same characters. Players are trying to claim the throne, and to do that, they will need to be the first player to win two rounds. Players start the game with their precious 12-sided stone, a reference card, and 7 character cards, which are the same characters for each player. Players start by rolling their die and placing it in front of them with that random value shown. This value is important in the game as you will be playing your cards to change its value, but you will want to end each turn with the highest value. A round will consist of players playing cards simultaneously until a player has one card left in their hand, or if a player has collected eight or more points. Let's now go over the gameplay or the flow of the game. Players will each secretly choose one of their cards to use each turn, and when all players are ready, everyone will flip over their cards simultaneously. At that point, if anyone has the same card as another player, their cards cancel out, and those players will discard them. Players will then perform the effects listed on their cards, sometimes affecting the value of their die. If multiple effects are affecting your die, then you can choose in which order that they occur. All players will then compare their die, including any players who had their card cancelled, and if any player ends up with the same value on their die, then those players have their values cancelled out and will not be able to score any points this turn. Whoever has the highest value on their die this turn is the winner and will take a two-point token. The runner-up is the player with the second highest value and they will take one of the one-point tokens. Players will then discard their card that they picked for that turn, forming a personal discard pile to their side. Players will then continue again, choosing a new card without re-rolling their die, or if at this point a player has only one card left in their hand or a player has collected eight points, then the round ends. Players will continue to play cards randomly, trying to get the highest value on their die to score points until someone triggers the round end. The players will then compare points scored during the entire round. If players have the exact same number of points as another player, then their points are all cancelled out and they can no longer win the round. But the player with the most points that does not match another player will win, and that player will choose one of their seven cards to place face down under their 12-sided die. All players then take all their cards back into their hands, minus any played under the die, and continue with a new round until a player triggers the end of the game by having two cards placed under their die. The biggest concept that you need to understand in this game is to do everything differently than all the other players because in many aspects, if you have the same card or the same value on your die or the same points at the end of the round, then you'll get cancelled out. This is the one way that makes this game different than many others that I've played. But also the cards and their abilities are really what makes this game shine. Players will try to choose cards that will ultimately give their die to the highest value at the end of the round. But if players use all their cards that lower their die and then all the cards that raise them, players end up getting cancelled out. Which gives them zero chance to win any points that turn and less likely to win the round. Also, all players start with a different value on their die than, than other players, and the choice of a card might be different for that reason alone. Players can also win the round by winning the first couple turns and then falling short the last couple. With these card abilities, players can randomly, or probably more strategically, change their die to have the highest value at the end of most of the turns to gain the most points at the end of the round. Another thing that's important to realize is that you don't have to have a large number to win points. You just have to have a value that's higher than all the other players. So plug that into your strategy as well. 
The game is a great filler game that plays in a short amount of time, and the players play at the same time, so there is very little to no downtime. It can be played casually as well as strategically, and can be enjoyed by those different types of players as well. And lastly, there is an added variety as you can add different cards with new abilities each time you play the game. This is definitely one of those games that after you play those two rounds and someone wins that you say, okay, let's, let's play again. I really expect there to be expansion in the future of this game giving you more cards or adding like another mechanic to make it just a little bit more complex than what it is. So build up your blue stone to the highest value with your family and friends in King of 12 by Corax and Lucky Duck Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.